on this week's Gadget Show Web TV. Dom's taking some snaps with the Leica M9, I bring you this week's best tech news and check out the best PVRs on the market. Hi and welcome to this week's Web TV. Coming up later in the show, I'm going to make sure I have all of the new episodes of The Gadget Show recorded with some awesome PVRs. But first, John's looking at the Leica M9, which claims to be the world's most compact full format digital camera system and sets a new benchmark in modern photography. But will it live up to Mr. Bentley's high standards? Well, over to him to find out. This is the new Leica M9. It's been out for a few months now and it promises to do what no camera before it has managed. Be a convincing digital equivalent of those marvellous 35mm rangefinder Leicas that have been beloved of photojournalists for the last 50 years. And I think the key to its success is that it uses a full frame 35mm sized sensor with 18 megapixels and it uses the same lens mount that first appeared appeared on the Leica M3 in 1954, so you can use all those glorious, sharp, beautiful Leica lenses like this 35mm Summicron F2 on that marvellous bayonet mount that has remained unchanged since the M3 Leica appeared in 1954. It really is a delightfully quick and snappy lens changing action. Styling-wise, it looks very much like one of Leica's film cameras. It's very similar to the film version of this, which is the M7. It's got very few controls, very few features. There's nothing like image stabilization or autofocus, but the controls you do have are superbly well-engineered. I mean, just look at that shutter speed dial. It's fantastic. You even get uh, intermediate positions, like you get one for 1 45th of a second between a 60th and a 30th. It's marvellous. Focusing is uh, manual. You've uh, got a slider there on the, on the lens and what you need to do is match two images in a patch in the center of the viewfinder that's the rangefinder system it tells you what you're looking at is in focus the menus are very simple as well there's no live view you're expected to use the viewfinder and even that's got very limited amounts of information in it you've just got uh, the highlighted lines to show you the field of view for the lens that you're using and uh, a sort of fairly crude sort of LED readout about exposure at the bottom. It really is a delight to use. The shutter's fast and responsive and the camera can produce some really superb quality images. It is of course very, very, very expensive. It's about £5,000 for the body and £2,000 for the lens. So it's a very, very considerable investment. And that's before you add any other lenses. Also on the negative side, the uh, resolution of the screen, the LCD screen at the back is a bit disappointing. It's also quite slow to review your pictures. The sensor seems to attract dust quite easily and there's also no video capture option at all. However, I think what is brilliant is that the M9 is keeping this traditional form of photography very much alive in the digital age. Right, it's time for the news and first up, HMV has just launched its new download store, taking on the likes of Apple and Amazon at their own game. HMV have claimed that they plan to become an entertainment super brand with the launch of their new website, hmvdigital.com. The download store will be fully compatible with PC and Mac, with HMV's download manager synchronizing with a customer's iTunes library or Windows Media Player. You will be able to pre-order tunes, gift vouchers to your friends, and also be able to re-download previous purchases for free. They also promise free tracks to selected early adopters, along with a limited time offer of just 40 pence per track for the top 40 chart tracks, and for chart albums an offer price of just £4.99, with regular and ongoing discounts for classic albums and the selected artist of the month. Right, next up. Apple has recently put a high-quality 16x9 27-inch LED cinema display on sale with a pin-sharp 2560x1440 resolution, but as with all Apple products, it's going to come at a premium of $1,000. It offers a powered USB 2.0 hub, built-in iSight video camera, microphone, speakers and universal MagSafe connector. 
And the monitor includes an ambient light sensor, which will adjust the display brightness automatically. The Mac 27-inch cinema display has a release date of September, but pricing is yet to be confirmed. With more and more channels available through Freesat, Freeview and Sky, there's a plethora of TV shows you can keep up to date with. However, there's only one gadget that can really help, the PVR. But which one is the best? Well, I've whittled them down to the best I think you can buy. First up is this, Panasonic's Freeview HD Blu-ray player. If you're looking for a high-end PVR, then this really is your best choice. Not only is it an amazing Blu-ray player, but it also comes with two Freeview HD tuners. Freeview HD basically brings you high-definition channels from the BBC, ITV and Channel 4, and later in 2010, 5 HD will join too. But you must live in a coverage area. And to find out, you can just go to the Freeview HD coverage postcode checker, and of course you need a HD ready set to see the high-definition pictures. It even has home networking to watch recorder programs played back in another room. And if you want to hook it up to the internet, Panasonic's Fiera Cast system lets you watch YouTube videos, photos on Picasa and other news. And even if you run out of space on your hard drive, don't worry because you can record your shows in HD on Blu-ray discs. So if you want something that has left no feature to the imagination, this really is your best choice. If you're wanting to stick with Freeview and still have a great PVR box, you just want a little bit more choice, then BT Vision might just be the answer. BT Vision gives you the option to still access all the Freeview channels, but you get given the choice of BT's premium services such as Vision Film, Sport, TV, Music and Kids, all offering some of the latest entertainment. And the great advantage of BT Vision is that you only pay for what you watch. And BT have announced they have access now to Sky Sports 1 and Sky Sports 2 just in time for the new Premier League, which expands their range even more. So with a combination of more choice and a great PVR, BT Vision is well worth considering. But if you want not only the ultimate entertainment experience, but the best PVR available, then Sky is definitely the best choice. It's the company that started the PVR revolution with the Sky Plus box and still continues to lead the pack with their intuitive electronic programming guide and amazing choice of channels that will keep anyone in the family happy. There's plenty of Sky HD content and it looks pristine. Colours are vibrant and pictures are so detailed and some of Sky's football coverage is really crisp. It just looks amazing. And the HD box comes with all the usual features. You're able to pause live TV, record one programme while watching another. Sky TV is a bit of a commitment, but it's a commitment I think you won't regret. Well, that's all we've got time for this week. I'll be back next week with more tech news and reviews. The main show will be on Monday night, 8 p.m. on 5, where John Otis and myself are testing some of the best coffee-making machines. Jason jets off to Los Angeles to get his hands on the latest games at this year's E3, while Otis and Susie embark on an outdoor challenge and a race using some awesome tech. And finally, John will be running down the top five color printers. It's definitely one not to miss. See ya.